My name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this AIM Learn Fast video, we will learn how to understand how to read friction circles in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So Roger, in another video, we talked about the GSUM channel and how that works to find out, you know, grip potential. But I've read a lot about friction circles, but I don't really understand them. Can you show me how friction circles work in Race Studio and kind of make that a little more clear? Yeah, it, it, the our software Race Studio Two doesn't have a just a nice little button to push, right, and and get a friction circle. And they're a popular thing, and we're, and, and we're probably going to add one uh, in, in the future, uh, a nice direct way to get to it. But uh, let's talk about a little bit about friction circles first, and then we'll uh, let's build one and let's uh, let let's show how to to use them a little bit. They're pretty easy to build, but friction circles are basically like like you mentioned. We talked about. Um, you know, G sums and lateral Gs and longitudinal Gs in a previous video. And friction circles are nothing more than just a different way to look at that same information. And some people love looking at friction circles versus the G sum and other ones, you know, vice versa. So um, whatever works for everybody, obviously, is what we want to we want to give them. So the, the way that we look at data like we're looking at on the screen now is is a sensor value is in the Y axis, the one up and down on the side. And we've got distance across the bottom, right? Distance or time. And in this case, we're looking at distance. And the XY plot is a function inside of Ray Studio 2 that gives, allows you as a user to compare not a sensor versus time and distance, time or distance, but rather a sensor versus another sensor, right? Uh, uh, an input versus another input. In this case, longitudinal Gs versus lateral Gs. And uh, so there's a whole other function outside of this measures graph that we have active right now. And if you look up here in the upper, in the, in the primary icon toolbar, we've got this icon that says plot channel versus channel. And that's the place that we, we, we build our XY plot, right? X, one channel versus Y versus another channel, right? So I'm going to open up the XY plot function. And, uh, and, and it opens up, and there's just a couple things we want to chat about in setting these up for to create the friction circle type of a, a look that we want. The first thing is you see, and I, and I know the, let me just make it a little bit bigger to make it a little cleaner so we can look at it very easily. What you're seeing here is a channel up the Y axis or the left axis here. And then across the bottom is the X axis. And we've got another channels versus values here. You can see that it's not, you know, 100, 200, 300 feet across the bottom. It's G values across the bottom. Zero being here in the middle, left and right. And, and miles per hour up the, up the left side. So what we got to do is first we're going to set the, the channel value for this x-axis in order to get, a, to get an xy plot of a friction circle. The, this axis, whatever we're showing on this axis, is controlled by the channel you have active in the measures and laps toolbar. In this case right now, you can see it's miles per hour, and GPS speed is the channel that's selected. So what we the best xy plots the way that most people like to look at them is having our longitudinal g's breaking and acceleration on this left edge on the xy axis so i'm just going to turn on longitudinal g's and i'm going to turn off speed we now have longitudinal g's as our our our, our x axis on the side it's all driven by what we the channel we have ch chosen in the measures and laps toolbar the channel across the bottom in this case it does look like uh, lat lateral g's but if we want to change that up here in the upper right hand corner of the XY plot dialog box, we have a settings button that looks like a little wrench. If you click on that, you this dialog box chooses what goes across the bottom on the X axis. In this case, it's already selected as a GPS lateral G's. Then you also have a, the, the option of three different ways to present the data. We can do it in lines. We're going to leave it in lines, or you can do it in dots, or you can do it uh, in little circles. The dots and the circles are very, very closely related to each other. So, um, But we're going to leave it in lines. That basically every tenth of a second, it is doing the math, and we're connecting those dots together with lines. It's a little clearer and easier to see with lines. 
And then the last thing that we're going to, you know, we can ch chat about or set change in this box is the width of those lines. And I, I like a nice little thin line, so I'm going to leave it at a one. And then uh, normally you'd hit apply and exit, but since I didn't change anything, I'm just going to hit the exit button. And that is a friction circle XY plot. Now, let's talk a little bit about it. We're going to resize some things so you can actually see what it's telling us. Uh, and, and we'll throw a couple more channels at it just to make it a little bit clearer. So let me make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it over here, bring it over here to the side. Let's make our measures graph a little bit smaller so we can, I want to have both of those open at the same time. I'm going to make the XY plot a little bit bigger. So I have my GPS map here on the left. I have my friction circle or the XY plot here in the middle and then my normal measures graph here on the, on the right side. And the, uh, so if I put my cursor anywhere in the measures graph and start moving it around, you can see wherever the cursor is here is where the cursor is in the measures graph. Those, all three of these now, and this is the location, all three of these are dynamically linked together, right? And the measures graph is boss. You, you, you click anywhere in this measures graph and wherever I click, that's where the cursor goes, right? And that's, so, so that's the boss. So, but right now, all I've got is longitudinal G's, which makes a nice pretty XY plot. And, but, and, I think we like to have maybe a little bit more information. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn on the GPS speed and it's, it's going to add some things to the screen that you want to kind of ignore the speed uh, X, Y plot, but it helps me know when you, the cart is accelerating and, and, and things like that. So I'm going to add that one in there. So you, uh, what you're really looking for in an X, Y plot, a friction circle, again, going back to our video we made uh, earlier about G sum is what you're really looking for is the shape of this, force that the cart is putting out, the cart and the driver combination. Basically, if you think about it, I'm going to put my cursor right here and just and, and pause right there. My cursor is right there in the middle of the XY plot. And if you look at it, I'm going to go down, it's at zero lateral Gs. This is lateral Gs across the bottom, left and right G forces. And I'm at zero longitudinal. And again, as we talked about earlier, negative numbers are braking, positive numbers are acceleration on longitudinal Gs. So right here, it, the cart has no force against it, right? The driver sitting in the seat doesn't feel anything. He's going, maybe doing 40 miles an hour, but it's you, basically there's no braking forces, there's no turning forces, it's zero, zero on the graph. As soon as the driver hits the brakes, the forces are being getting bigger in the longitudinal G direction being thrown towards the steering wheel. And in this case, the driver is starting to turn at the same time. So it's growing in, in braking forces, negative Gs, negative longitudinal Gs. It's also growing in positive lateral Gs here, especially here at the bottom, right? And that is, if we, if we let's find that spot real quickly, probably right here at the end of the back straightaway, right there, right? So here, the driver has hit the brakes, Right here, the speed is up here, and then all of a sudden he hits the brakes. You can see the, the longitudinal G builds, and you can see over here that it's going to, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and this, this reinforces a term that I use a lot. I've already used it once already in this video, is uh, measures graph is boss. Whatever I, we have viewing in the measures graph is what we are viewing in the, in the XY plot. Watch what happens when I zoom in to that corner a little bit here on the measures graph. See how it's reducing the amount of data we're seeing in the XY plot? So I'm going to stop about, I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm going to pull that over just a little bit by using the mouse on the bottom bar. And now you're seeing here, if I put the cursor here and start dragging to the right, watch the cursor on the XY plot. There he starts to hit the brakes. The brakes are starting to be applied. And right there in the X, in the measures graph, you can see we're at maximum longitudinal Gs. We're at maximum longitudinal Gs here as well. The data is tied together. It's it's showing the same exact thing, right? Just in two different ways. And some people really can get a lot more out of this than uh, than other ways of looking at it. And then the driver starts to release the brakes here. I'm going to run the cursor up there, and then he pauses right here on his braking, release the brakes, right? But he's right. see how the lateral Gs keep building. So he is actually turning and releasing the brakes at the same time. In a perfect world, what you want to see in a friction circle is you want to see the brakes be applied and the turning. You want it to come down here to about the maximum, right? And then, then this thing should have a nice, nice rotation out here. It should not cut back on itself. It should not come around. Just like we talked about on the G-SUM before, as you, this should be a nice, smooth transition from braking to turning up to almost the two 
nearly 2 Gs, 1.8 Gs, whatever the cart's capable of, it should come up. And then as you start to release the steering wheel and getting off the brakes and back on the throttle, it should have a nice, nice big friction circle that's right on the performance envelope of the cart. When you have these twitches and twists and turns of this as it's going up, especially this big one here at the, uh, as the driver is exiting the corner, if if I run my cursor, here he is coming along. I'm going a, you know a foot at a time down the track. That cursor comes up and watch this big curly cue it does here. You can see that he gets on the throttle, off the throttle, hits the brakes one more time, and then back on the throttle. And you can see right in this area of the friction circle that the, the it comes up, doubles back on itself. He gives it more steering, more braking, and then releases it again. And that just does nothing but irritate the chassis right on the, on the way out. So uh, this, what you want to see is just a nice big sweeping lines with no none of these curly cue things in it would be a perfect, you know, a, a much better friction circle, right? You can see the same stuff in the longitudinal Gs. I'm going to bring up a, a G sum. I'm going to bring up the lateral Gs and the G sum as well. And we're going to throw a bunch of stuff at the XY plot, but again, we're only focusing on the uh, on the uh, XY plot of the uh, longitudinal and the lateral Gs. But uh, here's your friction circle over here, and here is your G-sum showing the same thing. The driver had a lot of Gs in it right here, and you can see here that the, the everything is pretty good, But any, and we're only concentrating on the exit. So as the driver is releasing the steering wheel up here in the lateral Gs, he's releasing the brakes, and then all of a sudden right here, he hits the brakes again, right? And he turns the steering wheel a little bit more. You get a bump in the G-sum. All of that shows itself in the XY plot even clearer. You got that big sweeping, you know, turns back on itself, another big zero in the in the friction circle, and then on its way out. That's what you want to not see, right? So uh, just another, just a comparison. Number one is how to set up the friction circle, which is just an XY plot, turn on the function, set it up by whatever channels you want on this side. We're really determined on the longitudinal G. That's the one we really want to see. Lateral Gs across the bottom. That's this piece we're looking at here. I threw some more channels up, and it, it kind of clutters up the screen a little bit, but hopefully it explained what we're seeing. And then uh, and then zoom into the area you really want to see, and then watch and see how smooth the driver is staying out on the performance envelope of the cart and the driver combination. And in this case, he missed it a few times on the way out. So let's look at that same corner just by grabbing another lap. Let's just come down into our test laps toolbar, grab lap nine, and let's go look at lap eight. Lap eight was even worse. See that in this particular corner on the way out. Look at that. It, it uh, the driver really went back on himself one time. They're really big. This one's this one's a little bit better. See that came down here, broke, turned. There's a little bit of a curly cue, but it, it, the general shape is better, and even the G sum looks substantially better. It's the same data being projected in different ways, and uh, but you can see the driver actually did a did a, a much better job on lap seven than they did on eight and nine. So hopefully that gives you a, a little bit of an understanding of the XY plot and a, and a, a couple of examples of ones that weren't quite so good and, uh, and one that's uh, quite a bit better. So that's the end of this Aim Learn Fast video. We've been taking comments from throughout social media and trying to come up with new topics that are most useful. So feel free to leave a comment below or get a hold of us on Facebook or on Twitter and just let us know any questions you have or any things that you like about these videos. We try to put up new videos every Tuesday, so just stay tuned to our channel and come back for more videos.